I grew up in a family where we believed in the pre-tribulation rapture. Although my dad was King James uh, Bible reading person, uh, he was into the Schofield reference. And that had a lot of influence in my family, of course. The Schofield notes, uh, his perspective towards theology and all. Um, of course, my dad is also a fan of John MacArthur. Although he doesn't uh, agree with a lot of his doctrine, he just like he picks some of the doctrines he likes. Um, so we grew up believing this, that Lord Jesus could come any moment, right? In, a, in an instant, you know, people could be raptured. And one thing that was uh, often told to me, even from my parents and in the Sunday school, in, in the church, that, hey, one day you could wake up and nobody would be at home. Your parents would be raptured and you'd be all alone. You know, and, and that kind of, of course, that uh, gives you nightmares, you know gives you a fear. I used to have dreams where my parents got raptured and I was like all alone at home, home alone, you know, and uh, I had to like take care of the bills and all the things. Um, and that, that's a scary thought, you know, you could tell a child and there are so many children who grew up, to, grew up with this, right? And I remember there was this one uh, funny, <laughs> embarrassing experience, I believe. We saw on the news that the peace talks were happening between Israel and Palestine. And according to the pre-tribulation theology, the Antichrist would come through these peace talks. He will come and he will establish first peace, right? Uh, and, and according to this theology, before the Antichrist comes on the picture, the rapture would happen. Jesus would have come. So if the peace talks are happening, and if the Antichrist would come at any time, it means that the rapture could happen any time, you know. And I remember me and my mom, my sisters, we were uh, kneeling down at the bedside. And we were all praying, Lord Jesus, if you come tonight, if you come this week, please don't leave me behind. You know, I, I confess my sin. I'm going to be a good boy. <laughs> you know, forgive me of my sin I committed yesterday. Just, just in case you come today, don't leave me behind. Take me with you. And we were like praying, like uh, anxious and... Uh, um, afraid what might happen midnight or something like that obviously that <laughs> and, and don't get me wrong I'm, I'm not trying to bad bad mouth my parents my parents are saved they did a lot of good in my life you know of course they did something right I'm I'm saved Christian today uh, I go soul winning thanks to my parents of course um, but of course they themselves were deceived by this wrong theology and that influenced the whole family and uh, and, I'm, and I'm saying this I'm making this video because uh, there are scores of families still out there who believe this there's so many children who are growing up with this doctrine that Lord Jesus could come any moment and uh, the Bible doesn't teach that we know that how the tribulation works it's going to happen in between the seven years so what is the damage that it have caused in my life. Of course, it had, it had this doctrine uh, had some negative influence in my life as well. Um, growing up in my early teens or the mid-teens, we always we were always under this pressure that Jesus could come by the end of this year. You know, and we're all hoping that okay, you know what, Jesus is coming by the end of this year. So why do I have to study? Why do I have to work hard? Why do I have to prepare for my exams? Why do I have to give my hundred percent? You know. Jesus is going to come in like one or two years. Why do I have to plan my future? Why do I have to uh, or learn a skill or a trade and think about how my life will be in the future? What kind of a man I would be? You know, that day won't come. You know, and that made me lazy in life. You know, because uh, all I was thinking was, okay, I need to be in the church. I need to uh, focus on uh, reading the Bible and praying. That's all. That's, that's the only thing I need to do. Just uh, focus on purity. And of course, that's not how purity works. Right? Um, <clears throat> and I know a lot of friends from church who had the same mindset. You know, I'm like, well, the, the world and all, it doesn't matter. We, we just got to focus on the church, come to church on time, help with the setting up of things, clean, the, clean, do the house cleaning, set up the tent or whatever, you know, participate in the cooking of the food and bringing stuff. And, and a lot of them were, weren't really into working hard or passing the test or something. And we were, a bunch of us, we were like losers when it came to our school and stuff like that. 
we were working so hard for the church because that, at the end of the day, that's what matters if Jesus comes. You know? um, and that's a danger. Of course, false teaching is there for a reason. It is something that Satan uses to attack Christians, to make them uh, incapable of serving God. You know, end of the day, I was lazy. And that's something that I struggled with most of my life. You know, trying to be a hard worker was a challenge always. And even now, I sometimes I struggle with it and I thank God that God has been teaching me how to be a hard worker, how to focus at work, learn a skill, learn a trade. And thank God um, it's because of His mercy, because of His favor that I'm able to, uh, you know, make a living in spite of that. And one more thing I wanted to say that according to what I've heard from preachers who preach the pre-tribulation raptures, they're always asking this question. Are you ready? Are you ready? If, the, if Jesus comes, if the Lord comes, are you ready? And most of the time what they mean is, are you saved? No. Are you doing the works? Are you living in holiness? Did you repent of your sins that you committed yesterday and day before yesterday? Have you confessed all your sins? Are you ready? If Jesus comes, if you haven't confessed your sins, if you haven't repented from your sins, you're going to be left behind. That's what I've heard. My experience. Maybe there are other preachers who say, okay, all you got to do be, to, to be ready is be saved. Okay. It's kind of combining eternal security with pre-tribulation rapture, but I've never heard of that. Are you ready means are you living a life of holiness? And that's obviously the false gospel. That's, that's preaching the wrong Jesus, right? And I'm making this video to just uh, enlighten my friends and people who are watching that the pre-tribulation rapture is a false doctrine. A lot of people believe that Jesus could come any moment and then all the events, it's all, it's all, it's all a confusion when you believe in the pre-tribulation rapture. So I just want to ask you, what do you think? What does the Bible say? Can you quote a couple of verses um, regarding the post-tribulation, pre-wrath, rapture? So when it comes to the tribulation, the most famous passage I think of is Matthew 24, verse 29. And it says, Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken, and then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. So the Bible clearly tells us that Jesus is coming after the tribulation, not before the tribulation. Another passage is in 2 Thessalonians, where the Bible talks about when Jesus is coming, that he's coming after the Antichrist is come. And it says in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3, Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped. So the Bible again tells us that Jesus is coming after the Antichrist has come. The Antichrist, the man of sin, must come first. And only then Jesus is coming again in the clouds after the tribulation. That's what the Bible actually teaches. So the pre-tribulation pre rapture is, is a false doctrine, obviously. There are many Christians who are safe to believe that, but it's still a false doctrine. So some people say, okay, but Jesus is coming like, as a thief in the night. They use this, um, they use the symbolism. He's coming as a thief, a thief in the night. He can come at any moment. But that's not true because when the Bible is talking about Jesus coming as a thief in the night, it's actually talking about um, he's coming as a thief in the night for the unbelievers, not for us. And that's also something the book of Thessalonians talks about. The Bible says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, But of the times and the seasons, brethren, you have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say, Peace and safety, and then sudden destruction cometh upon them, as travail cometh upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that that day shall ta overtake you as a thief. So it says, but ye brethren, talking to the believers, are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. So that day when Jesus is coming, won't overtake us as a thief in the night. That's not true. It's, it's for the unbelievers who are unaware that Jesus is coming again 
but we are actually able to see the signs of the times. Amen. Amen. So we can, we, we know that the Bible says that, uh, that the man of sin first has to be revealed. And then Jesus is coming again. And it's after the tribulation. And it's even after the, the great tribulation. Because first comes the tribulation and then the great tribulation when persecution for Christians will intensify. And then Jesus is coming again and we will, we will be raptured. And people often mix up the tribulation with the wrath, of, the wrath of God. But the wrath of God comes after the, the tribulation when we are already raptured. 